Well, good Saturday morning and welcome to episode 50 of Martin's Koi Pond. Now as this is episode 50 and we are rapidly approaching 500 subscribers, I thought I would do a special edition which will be a recap of the history of the pond and where I am at now uh, in terms of filtration etc. So without further ado let's get on it. Welcome back. So this pond started off March of last year as my lockdown project and I initially built a two meter square pond in that far corner as you can see and I had a pressure filter and a little box filter for my filtration and five small koi and those koi were um, Luna, my Atsuri, um, Spot, which was a, was a Kahaku but it's now lost its colour, Jester, the um, smaller shower, and B, the Kiyotsuri, and Ghost, the white uh, Platinum Ogon. So, I had those fish and within a couple of weeks I realised that the pond was not going to be big enough for them. I started watching a lot of videos on YouTube and realised I would need a bigger pond. So after just four to five weeks of that pond's life I bought a paddling pool, sighted it on the lawn, drained the pond in the paddling pool moved the fish and filtration across and my family and I set to work making the pond bigger and we've made it so it's 3 meters 30 long that way and at the widest point it's 3 meters wide now there's a slight curve on this side here and on the end and this slight curve on this side means there's about a six six inch variance in that three meters across the length of the pond. Um, the reason I put a slight curve in it was I didn't want a uniform rectangular shaped pond. I wanted a little bit of shape to it. And uh, there's a slight curve to that end as well. And basically I made it, I, I couldn't go much further because of that wall over there so this was about the maximum size we could go to now during the dig we had problems because there was a soak away we had to move um, we hit a layer of that was full of gravel which made it very difficult to dig um, but we got through it and the pond goes from a meter at this end down to one meter twenty at that end so you'll often hear me refer to this end as the deep end um, it's a, a gentle slope and you know I'm quite happy with it like that because a lot of the debris ends up at this end in the summer which makes it easy to hoover now I initially started off with the shower filter and pressure filter and they were fed by the 12,000 litre per hour pump which was sighted in the middle of the pond. It became abundantly clear after a short time that I needed some sort of skimmer so I bought one of those floating skimmers um, but the problem with that was it needed cleaning out daily I'm not adverse to a bit of maintenance but daily was a bit much so I had a look around and realized that there were these stand skimmers available and I thought that would be a good idea to add that another pump and a box filter to feed off of it and at the same time as doing that job I added a retrofit bottom drain which is there now that bottom drain is now attached to the 12,000 litre per hour pump 
and since I've added that I get very little debris on the bottom of the pond it's been an absolute godsend of a purchase but the issue with that bottom drain is in a pump fed system is if I get a split in any of those pipes over there that are out of the water and a leak that thing is draining water from about a centimetre above the bottom of the pond so I could in theory totally drain my pond if I had a leak and I wasn't there to see it and deal with it so in order to stop that happening I fitted a float switch which is the blue and yellow thing there and the float switch will shut off both pumps after I've lost about a foot of water now my aeration is on a separate system so there would still be aeration going in the pond but the filters would stop and the pumps would stop until I could rectify whatever the problem was hopefully the aeration will just you know be enough to keep things ticking over until I see can sort out any emergency so the current setup is the bottom drain is hooked up to a 12,000 litre per hour all pond solution eco aqua pump which now feeds directly into the OASA 6000 6, screen matic filter and you saw my video a couple of videos ago of me installing that and what I think to that very impressed the skimmer is now connected to a 8,000 litre per hour pump and that feeds directly into the pressure filter and the pressure filter is basically a pre-filter for the shower so skimmer pump pressure filter shower back to the pond flow wise I have a nice natural circulation going due to that and it literally the flow goes around here up here where it picks up the flow from the from the shower and then it comes back down here and that's why the, sh the um, skimmer is there because that's where all the leaves and everything end up and I have to empty that probably about once a week for leaves that it's picked up and any other debris but uh, luckily all the trees have pretty much shed every leaf they had so it won't be a problem now until the autumn I run a trickle in and trickle out method of water changes most of the time so at the minute you can see that little blue pipe there that's coming from my 400 gallon per day uh, RO device and that's been running in RO water now for 24 hours I'm going to keep it running till tomorrow so for 48 hours I'm not on a water meter I'm on rates thank god so I can afford to do that and because the RO water is basically dead water I have crushed oyster shell in the uh, Oasa filter to buffer the water back up a bit uh, mineralize it etc so that's basically the pond in a nutshell um, I believe I have 15 fish some people say it's too many um, if needs be when they grow I will see about moving some on but I'd rather not if I can get away with keeping this current stock because I like all these fish then that will do me so what I plan to do now over the next couple of days the weather's not great is to bowl up a couple of fish for you to look at in closer detail and I will talk about those fish, why I like them, why I bought them etc. So, 
look for the next clip. Well, welcome back. And even though I've got the mic, you will be picking up some wind noise because I just watched back the last clip. Um, apologies for that. But uh, there's not a lot I can do about the weather. It's very windy today. Now, you see I've got Vader bowled up. Um, let's just get a bit closer. Hopefully he won't stress out. Now, this is my prize fish, um, most expensive fish in the pond, a fish that's pretty eye-catching and a lot of people have commented on, on my videos. Now he's called Vader because his left eye is red and his right eye is blue. And Anakin Skywalker, aka Darth Vader, in the Star Wars films had a red and blue eye so that's why he's got the name Vader now I cannot claim responsibility for coming up with that my uh, son who's a bit more of a Star Wars geek than me uh, he came up with it I'm um, looking at him in here he's about between 40 and 45 cm's long um, which is actually a bit smaller than I thought he was, so that shows uh, that buying this new measuring bowl can give me a more realistic view on how big my fish are. Um, I say he, I don't know what sex it is. Um, but Vader is a very greedy fish. He eats more than any other fish in the pond. And will just slurp down masses of pellets at a time. He's also the most skittish fish in the pond and doesn't uh, doesn't like the net and stuff. Now some people might raise an eyebrow at me getting a fish out to, to just to show you but this is a one-off because it's my 50th episode. I'm not going to be getting these fish out again just to measure them. Um, I will only get them out if there's a problem and I need to scrape them or something like that. But at the minute, they're all fine. They don't need any scrapes, so I'm not going to do that to him. Um, without further ado, I'm going to sock him up and put him back in the pond. Right, welcome back. This is the next fish I just wanted to um, have a look at, measure it up, see how it's growing, etc. This is ash. Now this fish is called ash because it was almost jet black when we got it. Uh, my son wanted a jet black fish, but I've now found out that most jet black koi are actually showers. And obviously this is a shower and it's a very nice shower to my eye. Um, I really like it. Um, he's got a bit of black, which I think is gonna come out on his head. Um, the orange is getting better as he grows. Now this fish was 20 cm when I bought it uh, approximately May last year. It's now 30, 35 cm. So it's grown really well. I'm really happy with that for a, a first year of growth in my pond. Um, hopefully it'll be up 45 maybe even bigger next year. It's a lovely, lovely fish. Really like it, it's a calm fish. Um, one of my favorites. So that's Ash, my shower. And this is the final fish that I'm getting out for you today. This is Bobby, my one step Kahaku. Now, the interesting thing about Bobby this winter is there's areas of white coming through on his flanks especially just there some here um, and that side there the uh, orange is very thin now i'm wondering if this fish will totally change its look this year um, 
certainly looks like the orange along the spine is a lot better than it is on the flanks and there looks to be a, a really good orange patch just there that I think will stay so it's going to be interesting to see how Bobby develops over the next 12 months he's got a very dark um, red patch on the head as you can see I think that's there to stay now um, I bought Bobby at 25 cm he's now pushing 35 so he's also grown nearly 10 centimeters yeah, look, he's just over 30 about 33 um, so yeah happy with how he's grown he was my absolute bargain of a fish um, only paid 40 pounds for Bobby so and I really like him I know one of my viewers Koi Run really likes this fish um, so he's been out a couple of minutes so let's get him back and uh, that's it for today now I have been using my new pan net and sock and I must say what a difference they make in catching the fish and handling the fish you would think a shallow pan the fish would just jump off it but they don't they just kind of lay on it and it makes scooping them up with the net one-handed quite easy a lot easier than I thought it was going to be if you haven't got these items um, you don't have to spend an absolute fortune on them I've got an old fishing landing net handle I think I paid um, about £18 for that net at the top there and £21 for the sock net and that's a Norfine net so got those off a well known auction website and they're brand new so I wouldn't buy second hand nets because you never know what the previous owner could have had um, pr uh, parasite wise in their pond so with that having been said um, let's wrap up this clip and we'll catch you in the next one right welcome back and as you can see we've had quite a bit of rain this week and it's washed all that sort of most of that white film off all the slate quite nicely as I hoped it would now what I'm going to do now is just clean this out um, I would imagine it's getting close to winding on because there's quite a good pile of muck there um, I'm going to use this just to scrape it all off there lift this tray out and literally dump it on the garden tray goes back in and it's cleaned out now I would imagine that stuff will be good for the garden because it's got to contain lots of nitrates and phosphates and stuff but I bet the boss won't like it when the part of it starts to build up there so I'll have to sneakily place it all over the garden as I clean the filter out so yeah really happy with this thing uh, a lot of positive comments about it on uh, the video where I bought it and installed it thank you guys um, it does appear to be a proper bit of kit and uh, it was within the budget I had for this year for the pond now you know down the road more expensive better filters are likely but I think this will get me through a couple of years at least provided it don't go wrong obviously right with that being said I'll wind this clip up, catch you in a bit.